Hey, I'm Larry Janeski from Dr. Energy Saver, and today we're going to be talking about cellulose insulation compared to fiberglass insulation. And we have a little demonstration house here, and here we have a, a light bulb that obviously produces heat, well, incandescent light bulb, right? Not the light bulbs that we use here, but uh, the old-fashioned Thomas Edison kind is producing a lot of heat. So here we have cellulose insulation on the left side and fiberglass insulation on the right side and we have little thermometers here and it says 70 degrees inside here and 70 it started at 70 degrees it's moving up already and we're going to see what happens through the course of this video over a few minutes to the temperatures and how the heat can penetrate that uh, insulation. So what is cellulose insulation? Well, you know all that uh, paper that you send for recycling, whether it be newspaper or paper bags or your phone books and so forth? Well, they grind all that up and make cellulose insulation out of it. Seems pretty simple, but there's some special things they do to make it perform like it has to in your home. First of all, you don't want the cellulose insulation to get moldy if it gets damp. And there is a special additive called boric acid that prevents mold uh, from growing on the cellulose. Uh, the boric acid has also been used as early as 19, in the 1940s, they used it to um, deter uh, insects uh, safely, and it's still safe for that purpose. Uh, so uh, insects do not like it, and insects will not eat your insulation, and it works very, very well. It's also treated with a fire retardant so that it doesn't burn uh, as you might expect uh, ground up paper to do. Now I've just had the lamp on this demo uh, box here just for a few minutes and you can see that the temperature of the cellulose is still 70 degrees and over here it's 81 degrees in this fiberglass. I mean a dramatic difference already and literally it has been about 120 seconds since I turned this thing on. Um, not very long at all and so you can imagine what would happen in your attic if you, in a wintertime condition, the heat trying to go up into the cold attic, or in the summertime condition, the superheated attic, 120 degrees, trying to, you know, heat moves from more to less, and that's the point of insulation. It has to resist heat flow. That's what R value means, resistance to heat flow. And in the summertime, you'd have to resist that heat from penetrating to your drywall and making your drywall hot, and your drywall would just be a big radiant heater on the top of your uh, each room and um, your insulation is supposed to prevent that. So we have a, a really, um, it's still 70 on the cellulose side. Just in the time I've been talking, this went up six degrees. It's now uh, 85.9. Another thing about cellulose insulation is, is that it's very good at uh, preventing sound from traveling through your house. You can make your house a lot quieter. And here we have a demonstration where we're gonna take this personal alarm, and I don't know how this is gonna work on video here, but I'm gonna pull this, it's gonna make a very loud noise. Okay, and if, uh, I don't know if the microphone can do it justice, but that is annoying. And so we're gonna drop it in there, and we're gonna put this, uh, it's in this cellulose box, and that is absolutely amazing. I mean, I can barely hear it inside that box. And uh, so cellulose will make your home much quieter. We dense packed a garage ceiling with cellulose insulation and uh, one uh, homeowner said that in the very early morning her husband would go out and she'd still be sleeping and she could hear the garage door going up while he was backing out at uh, five in the morning and that's how you know she knew uh, she woke up when he was on his way to work. Well after we insulated that garage ceiling which was her bedroom floor uh, there wasn't that hollow sound walking over the floor, but she didn't hear that garage door that next morning and she had wondered, did he go to work? Where is he? So uh, really amazing. When you install it in the attic, you get a similar effect. There's uh, wind noise uh, from a vented attic. There is uh, road noise uh, from cars passing by and so forth and whatever's in your neighborhood and it will make your home uh, much quieter. Here at Dr. Energy Saver, we use cellulose for lots of different things, including fixing cantilevers where a floor hangs out uh, over a wall. Uh, we can use it to dense pack uh, wall cavities. We use it for garage ceilings. We use it commonly for attic floors. Uh, and there's lots of different uses for cellulose. We did a fire test with a torch and burned many different insulation materials. Fiberglass bats, open cell spray foam, closed cell spray foam, 
polyisocyanurate board foam, extruded polystyrene board foam, expanded polystyrene board foam, and two other products called Aircrete and Cellulose. And by far, by a mile, the two best performing, just outdistanced the rest, uh, best performing insulations were uh, Aircrete and Cellulose. They both performed equally, absolutely fantastic. All right, now it's been about 10 minutes or so since we've had this, uh, this light bulb on, and look at the difference. It's 74 degrees in the cellulose, just it came up about four degrees, and the fiberglass is 104 degrees. Absolutely amazing. Why would you ever want this in your house? You can see if you have it, which most homes do, it is really severely underperforming. And if you have fiberglass bats in your attic, we will move them to air seal the attic floor and to cover your can lights and your attic hatch and uh, around your chimney and all the places where air can get from your house up into that vented attic. And then we will put those bats back and then we will blow cellulose insulation over the fiberglass bats. And will cap it off and the cellulose is much more resistant to uh, wind washing from your vented attic where the cold air would penetrate that insulation and uh, it will also recapture the R value that you were promised from the fiberglass it'll help uh, that and we put a lot more of it we put 17 inches typically uh, total from the top of your drywall to the top of the insulation that is a lot of insulation so you will have a warm blanket over the top of your uh, home and the cellulose is blown in and the advantage of blown in insulation is that it fills all the gaps and cavities and odd shape framing cavities that uh, the fiberglass bats just can't do. So you don't have any gaps in there like you would with fiberglass bats. And being that the cellulose is blown in so much higher, so much thicker and so much higher than the top of the ceiling joist, you don't have uh, what we call thermal bridging, which is uh, where the wood is more thermally conductive than the insulation. So if you only have uh, enough thickness of insulation to be in between your ceiling joist, then the wood will show up on a thermal imaging camera as cold lines in the winter from above, uh, or from below rather, and uh, warm lines from above. Uh, so we're covering the top of the ceiling joist so uh, you don't have thermal bridging, and that's a, a big advantage. So. The cellulose insulation is really the way to go and will perform so much better than what you have in your home right now. One of the questions people often have about cellulose insulation is, what about if it catches fire? I mean, if it's ground up paper, wouldn't it just catch fire very easily and my house will be engulfed in flames before I can get out? Well, actually, it's quite amazing that cellulose performs better than any other insulation almost there's only one other insulation that performs equally as well as cellulose but it's uh, not very common uh, and we can see that uh, I'm holding a chunk of cellulose here and I put a penny on top and I don't feel any heat on my hand and that penny has melted and into just a big blob and uh, so you can see that the cellulose is not catching fire, even with this intense heat from this torch. And it, uh, the fire retardant in the material prevents it from catching fire, and it also causes the cellulose to develop a char. So if there were a fire in your home, uh, the uh, superheated air from the fire cannot penetrate this cellulose to uh, burn the framing members and the other side of the wall and so forth and uh, it's quite amazing there's a video online called the big burn the truth about cellulose insulation and in it they built three different houses uh, small houses and one would had no insulation one had fiberglass insulation and one had cellulose insulation and they lit them on fire it's a very controlled thing the fire department was there and there was architects and and engineers and so forth and they wanted to see what would happen and in 42 minutes, the house uh, that had no insulation fell down. A few minutes later, the house with fiberglass insulation burned and fell down. And 67 minutes later, finally, the house with the cellulose uh, fell down. They were all the, exactly the same. So you had 25 minutes more 
to get out of the house essentially before your house collapsed from the fire. And uh, that is uh, significant. Uh, cellulose is much better at stopping airflow, and if you stop airflow, you will uh, stop the fire, where fiberglass will just melt away uh, with the heat and the fire will go right through it. As you can see in this demonstration, where we are uh, holding the torch to a fiberglass bat, and you can see what happens. The results are much, much different. Now, I want to show you something absolutely incredible about cellulose insulation. It has boric acid in it, and that prevents mold and insects uh, from bothering the cellulose. Now, what is boric acid? It's a mineral mined from the ground. It's used in um, various consumer products. It's used as an antiseptic on minor burns and cuts. It's used in eye wash in very, uh, obviously, diluted uh, state, but uh, it's used in eye wash. It's used uh, for a lot of different things. Um, and it's a useful uh, chemical. Now, here we have um, a mold farm, and this is something that we started here at our company a long time ago to uh, demonstrate um, how mold likes to grow on organic materials. And so we have some organic materials in here, some inorganic materials in here. One of the things our company does, another division that we have is finished basements and we're showing how mold grows on drywall and it grows on insulation and it grows on wood, but it doesn't grow on inorganic materials like foam insulation. It doesn't grow on cement board and plastic and so forth, but here, a year ago, I put this cellulose, this cup of cellulose insulation in here, and I put it in a coffee cup, a paper coffee cup, and you can see what happened to the coffee cup. It's absolutely covered in mold, and this is really uh, a lot of uh, mold spores in here that's uh, pretty much overcoming me at this moment. Uh, but I also put this, this cup of uh, newspaper in here. And so cellulose is ground up newspaper, but you can see what happened to the newspaper. It got all black and there's mold on it. There's mold on this coffee cup, okay? But let's take a look at the actual cellulose in the cup, okay? You see the cellulose, it's this native color here. There's no uh, mold growing on this uh, cellulose. It's damp for sure, because this is a damp chamber that we have created here, but we don't have mold growing on the cellulose. And that's just absolutely amazing uh, in this environment, the absolute harshest environment where we have kept it at 90, 95% relative humidity for a year and we don't have mold growing on the cellulose, but you can see what happens to all the other inorganic materials. Uh, for example, here's a piece of wood and it's uh, rotting. Here's a piece of drywall and uh, absolutely uh, covered. Uh, here's a piece of uh, OSB, uh, basically plywood oriented strand board, and it's just, oh my gosh, terrible. So this is the chamber that this has been in. So I guess what we're saying is if you have a mold problem on your cellulose, the rest of your house is going to be rotted away before. So cellulose is a fantastic uh, mold resistance as well. You know, if you want to make your home more comfortable and energy efficient, or just parts of it, call Dr. Energy Saver. Insulation is just part of the puzzle. There's lots of other things that need to be done along with insulation, and we can help you with that. Call Dr. Energy Saver. We'd love to help you.